Hello again from Brazil. Uh, this video is going to just going to be a quick one. It's just about creating expenses as well as bills in QuickBooks Online. This is uh, really briefly too, just kind of going over the uh, unpaid bills report as well. So the first thing, of course, that you're going to make sure that you have set up in your chart of accounts is the actual correct uh, expense accounts, which is basically the buckets of those expenses are going into, which will show up on your profit and loss report. So in order to get again to your chart of accounts, hit the gear icon into the top right and you'll see card of, chart of accounts here, or you can go to all lists, chart of accounts, or you can go to accounting, chart of accounts, multiple ways to get there. So if you scroll down, it's sorted by type by default. So if you go down, you'll see income and then expenses. And again, these are your expenses that are gonna show up on your profit and loss. And then you'll see parent accounts. If you create any sub accounts, you'll see them. So before creating any bills or expenses, you want to you just make sure that the buckets are there that you want to put them in. So that's kind of step one to make sure that you have it set up. Next would be the vendors themselves. Now keep in mind, you can really quickly, depending on how much information you need in QuickBooks Online of the vendor. So if you just need basically the name of the vendor, then you can do that while you're creating expenses and uh, bills very easily. But if you need a little bit more information, in QuickBooks Online, let's say you need their email to actually, you know, send them a check or maybe you need their website in there, their address, things like that. Um, so you, and, and expenses here in the, in the left-hand column, you can go to vendors. And then here you will see your list of vendors. You can search if you need to search, if you have a lot of them, to see if you already have the vendor in there so you're not creating duplicates. And then if you need to create a new one, you can just go right here, new vendor. And then here you'll have a lot more options you can put the company name, um, if it's an individual that you want to know, keep the name of as well. So maybe the owner you can put here, company name you can put here, and then you can choose which one um, to actually display in your QuickBooks. And then you can do a different one. If you're sending them physical checks, then you can choose what the actual name is that you put on the check, especially if you're printing them within QuickBooks Online. Um, address, of course, too. If you're sending them a check, email, um, phone number, website, things like that. You can put uh, attachments. So if you have some sort of agreement or something with them, some sort of PDF, whatever it is that you want to keep track of per vendor, then you can attach something here and that stays with the vendor in your QuickBooks Online. And then you can choose if it's always the same expense account, just to save you some time, you can choose that here. And then of course, too, if you're tracking payments for 1099s for contractors, then you can choose this here and then you can run reports for 10 to 9 contractors at the end of the year. And then you can also put in their either the social ID number um, or their EIN number um, if they're registered for that. So that's a great way to keep track of all that to keep you out of trouble. So let's X out of that. So once you have your, your expenses set up and then your vendors, and then you're ready to start making expenses and bills. So one way to do it is if you're going through your banking feed, you can do it just through that. If you see expenses here and you don't want to go through the process. So if you're just basically doing stuff in a cash basis and you're not going through and you're not creating expenses and bills as you go, you just want everything to be categorized correctly for tax purposes. Then you can just go through your bank feed and just go from there. So you see like traveling mailbox, then you can just, um, for the vendor, you can just search it if you have it. If you don't have it, this is where you can just hit add new and just really quickly add the name. You can choose the category, which is those expenses that I talked about before in the chart of accounts. If you already have it set up, you can choose it, type it. If you need to, you can also add a new one right here. So you can just do it either just through your bank feed really quickly like that. Or like I said too, if you're, if you're going um, kind of as you go and you're creating expenses, then you'll most likely do it here. So if you go in the top left icon here in this plus new under vendors, you'll see expense. So you can click on that. And then your first option, of course, would be to choose the vendor, which they call the payee. Um, so you can, again, all the lists I showed you before, you can choose them or you can add new if you need to add a new one here. Um, the payment account, that's the account that the expense was actually taken out of. So whether that's a credit card or your bank, um, payment dates, self-explanatory. Um, the store, if you have location set up and you can label this differently, it might say location or you might not have this option at all. If you don't have plus or simple, or if you have simple start, um, you can choose that here. And then again, the category, this is the chart of accounts that we looked at before. So if you hit the down arrow here, you'll see your expenses. Let's see the job supplies. Um, you can tab over or click. You can just description, this is for you to kind of keep track of. So, so when you're looking back, 
whether you're um, for management purposes or an audit or anything like that, um, the, generally the more information you have, the better. So you can put a description in there so you know kind of uh, what that was for and the amount is the dollar amount that you spent. And now, so this uh, option here is because I have it in settings. I have the classes set up as well as tracking expenses by customer. If those are turned off for you, these won't show up at all. So don't worry too much about that. But if they are turned on, this is where you would choose that here. You can choose your class. You can choose your customer if you're tracking expenses by customer. You can add a memo if you want. Um, and then you can also add an attachment. So this could be a receipt, uh, an agreement, some sort of contract, anything like that. Um, once the expense is set up, you can either make it recurring if it's something that's happening all the time, or you can save and close it. Or if you're adding a bunch of expenses all at once, then you can save and new it. And then it'll kind of just automatically bring you to a new expense screen. And then you can go from there, choosing the payee, kind of starting over from there. Now, if you're entering a bill in QuickBooks Online, so an expense is when you just, it's already paid. Um, so you pay them, you add an expense in QuickBooks. You can either do it that day or you can wait a few days to hit your bank feed, like I said before, and then you can just add the expense then. A bill is when you get a bill from a customer. One thing to keep in mind here is that bill and QuickBooks Online terminology is referring to vendors or payees. It's money that you owe. Invoice is under customers, so it's money that um, you are owed. So just because I know a lot of the terminology, someone will say, can you invoice this customer? Just make sure you don't hit new invoice because then, um, or I'm sorry, when someone says, can you enter an invoice? So if you receive an invoice that you owe money, you don't want to go in and hit new invoice, even though you're entering in technically an invoice and QuickBooks Online is classified as a bill. So just keep that in mind. So you hit new bill, same process as the expense, um, but choosing the vendor. And then here you can add the terms, which is basically when it's due. So it could be due now, due in 15 days, 30 days, 60 days, or you can add new. If it's like due in 45 days, for example, um, you can do that here. So fixed number 45 days, whatever it is. So the bill date, self-explanatory, that's when you actually receive the bill or when it's um, dated. I'm sorry, it's not when you receive the bill, it's when it's dated. So when the uh, performance or the service was, form was performed, um, that would be the bill date. The due date is when it's due. So, and this automatically populates. So let's say you put it at net 30 for today. It automatically switches to December 22nd is when it's due. If there's an invoice number, you can add that here. Again, if you're tracking by location, you can change that here. If you're doing tags, that's here. And then same thing, same expense categories as you were doing before with the expenses. I'm um, just doing it for a bill. Description, again, if there's a description you wanna put for what the bill is, the amount, the amount that's due. And then again, same procedure if you're, if you're tracking by customer or class. And then um, if you have a PDF scan of the bill, then you can include it here as well under the attachments. So really good for auditing purposes as well as just tracking yourself so you know specifically which uh, bill this is referring to. Kind of speaking of that, if you go into receipts here with the banking, um, if you have it set up, to where either you're scanning it in with your phone or if you're forwarding it with um, an email or maybe a combination of both, it works for bills and expenses. So, so whenever you're going and you're creating expenses and bills, whether that's through this screen or if you're creating it through the bank feed, what you can do is you can go through these receipts here and then match them to those transactions. So you have an expense for $50 from so-and-so vendor. QuickBooks will look at that receipt and read it and see that it's $50 for this date. And then it'll say, do you want to match it to this? And then you just hit match. And then that receipt is attached to that expense basically forever um, and it's audit proof. So the IRS does approve digital receipts. So it's a really easy and great way to keep track of your receipts. So number one, you don't have to store them or anything. You can just keep them all in the cloud. You know, in, in the cloud. Um, and that's included in all of QuickBooks Online subscriptions. So it's a really great thing to, uh, to take advantage of. Um, that's, again, it's included in your subscription. One advantage of putting bills in the QuickBooks Online versus just waiting until the expense is paid, it all works for tax purposes, especially if you're uh, filing your taxes on a cash basis and then it's all the same. But you can really have more information um, and for management purposes if you're looking more into the future. So if you know I have $1,000 of expenses due or bills due, in the next 30 days. If you're just waiting for them to be billed and you're not putting anything, or if you're just waiting for them to be expensed 
and paid for and you're not putting anything in the QuickBooks, you don't really have a way of knowing that. Um, so that's why you would want to do the extra work of putting in the bill, the bills, and then matching them whenever they're actually paid. Another report that you can do if you're doing that is the unpaid bill re bills reports. You can search for unpaid bills, and then what you can do is you can choose dates, some customizations, and then you can bookmark it. So you can really quickly and easily, um, once a month, once every couple weeks, you can just easily just click here and it'll automatically tell you what bills are due and then you can easily pay them you know, from there. So um, it's a really great insight to your business, great report um, if you're working with cash flow or if it's just a quick and easy way to make sure you're not missing any bills and recurring late fees, um, things like that. So also to, so even if you're filing your taxes in cash, you should always be running reports in my opinion as a cruel if you're doing management stuff for your business. So all those bills that you're putting in are showing up as expenses when they're, uh, you know, when they're due in an accrual basis. It's a great way of knowing month to month when the expenses are actually being incurred rather than waiting until they're paid because that's not really a true representation of what's going on with your business.